I would love to know more about your website, aside from the frantics. So we made a documentary about ADHD years ago now, and the broadcaster said, you might want to create a website to help promote the program. And so we put together a little website called totallyadd.com, and it took off, and we got a lot of response. And the response was mostly, oh, my God, you've been watching my life. Um, I watched your program and cried all night. Uh, my son saw your program and is dreaming he might actually have a life. I had some pills and I was going to kill myself after four bankruptcies and three divorces and I flushed them down the toilet. It was just every week there was just... So we expanded the website and we made more videos and a second program and then went on PBS and it's... So for seven, eight years now, I have become an advocate for adults with ADHD, adult, adolescents and adults. In the process, I've gotten to interview 75 or 80 of the top experts um, and produce all these videos, videos on sleep issues and cannabis and how, what to do about it and tools and strategies and careers and how to get through school and all this. And it's been the most, it's been the most amazing experience. And like a year and a half ago, I got appointed to the Order of Ontario and then this year I got the order appointed the Order of Canada and it wasn't just for comedy it was and writing and producing that it was because this thing we have two million visitors a year from around the world and these people are coming and I get choked up but they're coming and they're discovering they're not weird they're not broken they're not lazy I mean and they've been working their freaking hearts out right they're not lazy they've tried they may have given up at some point because they just can't figure it out and the phrase I've been using is that when you have undiagnosed ADHD, you're in a wrestling match with an invisible opponent. And you don't know that. You don't know you're in a wrestling match, let alone what the opponent is. So you have adults who've grown up and spent their whole life in a wrestling match with an invisible opponent. And they just think that's life, that life's a struggle to do anything, except when they're really interested and then they're awesome. And then they discovered that they have this... Uh, Execu this neurodevelopmental disorder or executive function issue that means they're really good at some things and not great at all at other things. Um, and so that's when they start, you know, I was 47. People are different ages when they find out. Um, my son was grade seven, which was, so we were able to do all these things and he succeeded. And when he's struggling in university, suddenly I went, it's back. And we took a whole bunch of steps. He took a bunch of steps and sword again so it's people say I don't want to, we have a video on the website called the terror of the ADHD diagnosis and it's like a horror movie I'm saying it's so frightening to find out you have ADHD you know, listen to people and it just goes from one adult after another saying I, I wish I'd known sooner it was such a relief thank God my parents said if only we'd known 20 years earlier we could have saved all this grief and struggle and failure and all of that so when you find out what's going on it's not, it doesn't automatically shift anything, but it's, you get a way better explanation than I'm stupid, lazy, crazy, dumb, and so on. You get, okay, I'm low on some dopamine and neuropinephrine, there, you know, uh, certain chemicals up here, and it's, okay, what am I going to do about that? And so that, um, you know, and it can be anything from mindfulness, and there's, a, there's so much that can be done. I mean, there's other health, mental health issues, you know, with, I don't know enough about epilepsy, but... If you have epilepsy, there's certain things you don't do that are going to trigger it, and stress and diet and whatever, and strobe lights, and there's certain things, and you take medication. With ADHD, there's so many different, it's so different in everybody to begin with, and maybe that's true of epilepsy, I don't know, but everybody is different, and everyone's situation is different. So for you and I, having this mindset that hops, jumps, and skips, you know, you're probably calmer interviewing me than if you had to sit down and write, do a contract, right? Yeah? yeah, exactly. So uh, I did a talk this week for the Learning Disability Association of Ontario. And it was, I got one person out of the 57 gave it a very good, and the others gave it excellent. Uh, because there's this huge overlap. 40% of people, kids with ADHD, have a second, have a learning disorder, dyslexia or whatever. And so once you know what's going on, you got a chance. But until you know what's going on, you don't have a chance. Now, with kids, it's overdiagnosed at this point. It's probably, in certain places anyway, it's overdiagnosed. And probably in some places in the States where they get extra funding, for every, then it's probably overmedicated. But with 
But in most places, it's still because of the stigma. Uh, everyone will say, yeah, everyone's got it these days. It's like, no, everyone's got some of those symptoms. But I lost my phone twice yesterday. Yeah, uh, but not today. I lost mine five times on the weekend. And the last time, it was down on the dryer. And I don't remember going downstairs, right? So, so it's a matter of degree, right? That's, and that's what I say. You know, everybody has ADHD. Sure, everybody has height. But at some point... If you're six foot five and up, you're in that top 4% of people with height, in terms of height. And if you don't know you're six foot five, if, you, if you're seven feet tall and you don't know it, you're going to go through life wondering why all the other kids get hurt when they play with you and the schools are going to go, well, anger issues and we need to check the home. And no, he's seven feet tall. So it's that finding out that you're different um, and then discovering how many very successful people have this. Now... The danger of saying that is that people then think, well, I just got to get it managed and I'll be the next Richard Branson or, or Nate, you know, Winona Judd or, or Michael Phelps or whoever. It's like, not necessarily. Um, but you now have a fighting chance. And that's the biggest thing for me is so every time someone comes to the website um, and often when they come back, they come back after hours, like at two in the morning, because they found themselves, they went and told everybody and everybody said, oh, you're just... It's always something with you. And, so, and it probably was something with them because there's a high rate of divorce and anxiety that by adulthood, with this going on, with this constantly tripping you up, with five freaking radio stations playing in your brain all day long, if you're not depressed and anxious, there's something wrong. You know, it's a natural reaction. And then there's higher rates of bipolar and a lot of other stuff going on with it as well. So anyway, so then the dismissal and the scorn. And I mean... Then they come back after hours to check and they're, they're crying and they're laughing and they're going, that's me. And so it was the symptoms, seeing the symptoms for me that was, the biggest thing for me was seeing a long list of symptoms of adult ADHD. And so when uh, I co-wrote a book called ADD Stole My Car Keys and it's available on the Totally ADD site, it's 155 behaviors, misbehaviors, beliefs, you name it, of people with ADHD. And you won't have them all. We are all a little different. Um, but it is, it is really interesting to see this. If you have a slight deficit at organizing, at planning, at managing this constant flow of information, then no wonder you drive faster because the adrenaline wakes you up and you're a better driver. You know, I'm a better driver when I speed. You might actually be if you have ADHD. Cause it's, you're, but you can't rely on adrenaline forever. Um, and uh, the thing I say is, uh, I also I hear a lot of people, will, parents especially, say, I just don't want them labeled and I don't, you know, I don't want to have a label put on them. It's like kids with undiagnosed and untreated ADHD adolescents have seven times the rate of multiple car accidents. And I know a few ADHD parents who've lost their kids to car accidents. Uh, I've had five or six in my life all at very low speed because it's boring at that point and I'm distracted and I'm playing with the whatever. And I... My foot comes off the brake and I bumped into the car ahead and so on. But the costs of undiagnosed, untreated ADHD are brutal. You know, 8000 to 14000 less a year, depending on your education. You can live six to six, I've heard 10 years less because of car accidents, because you get an infection, you don't bother getting it treated. Um, risk taking, way higher rates of substance abuse, seven times the rate of problem gambling, seven times the rate of alcoholism, nine times the rate of being ending up in jail, three to four times the rate of divorce, of bankruptcy, of STDs, of unplanned pregnancy. It goes on and on because you're not good at managing, at thinking beyond the immediate. And that's a big, big issue. So, but the good news is, once you know what's going on, you can start adjusting your life and you can, even if you, and there's a video we have on disclosing and I tell people and the experts in that video say, you don't have to disclose your ADHD. You might if you're going to university because you'll get accommodations. But if it's a job, you don't say that. What you say is, I could double my sales if you gave me an assistant to take care of my invoicing for two hours a week. And the boss will be, what? And you'll be able to do that. Double or triple your sales because you're not resisting this paperwork and so on so yeah it's ADHD is situational and when you find the right situation and you manage to arrange your life to maximize the situations where you're great you can soar so we've been redesigning the website redesigning totally add uh, com, and I it's not something I should be doing it's editing it's fine-tuning it's 
And at some point, the people who have been now doing the work said, yeah, we don't need you, Rick. You're, we need a joke here. Great. We need an example here. Great. We need something here. Good. I could give you that. But proofreading? No, somebody else should be doing that. And somebody else is. And it's great. And what I love about I mean, it's very personal to me. And every when I first went to it, it was like... Uh, somebody said something about, I can't wear a shirt with a tag, and I went, oh my god. <laughs> it's reading the comments. It's, it's understanding that you're normal, and I feel like it's a superpower. Well, it's, it is. It can be a superpower, right? So I can get up in front of people. I can you know, be fairly glib on camera, uh, and then I'll you know, be out in a noisy restaurant with the kids, and I can't hear. I can't filter out. It's a basically a filtering, organizing, managing information. Um, on the other hand, I can come up with 150 ideas. I remember a friend, uh, my business coach, had me over to meet another woman she was coaching. And she said, Rick might be able to have some ideas. And I, I couldn't even tell you now, I could not tell you what the, uh, what the business was, Tammy. But I, all, she explained what she was doing. And I went, well, you could do this. And you went, oh, yeah. And you could do that. You could even connect with that. You might want to turn that. In fact, those could be sold as a... She, she couldn't write them down fast enough. As, as, and this woman had been immersed in this business and working on it. And in 10 minutes, I came up with all these things that changed her business. So that's what I'm, that's right. That's, I'm really good. And we can be very good at lateral thinking, at creative thinking, at cross-disciplinary, right? So, uh, you know, I know a ton about a lot of things or a little about a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> and, but in depth, we get bored. Sometimes if we're interested, then we can lock right in. Yes, and that hyper-focus or super-focus is another way that ADHD gets dismissed. Well, he can focus just fine when he's interested, when he's got his game in front of him. Yeah, exactly. And that's, you know, I know one, um, one young man who's one of the top snipers in the Canadian military. ADHD up the wazoo, but under, you know, and you call 911, you're getting ADHD people. You go to Hollywood, you're getting ADHD people. Stock market, floor traders, ADHD. There's certain fields sales media. yeah the me oh yeah the media and in fact you know because as you can see we love to talk more than television even in radio when i'm interviewed or patrick mckenna who's in the documentary with his wife janice when we're interviewed on the radio every time well we'll take a break and we'll be right back yeah i think i got this uh, my kid has it and i i didn't I, yeah so where can people find more information? So the website is totally, ADD, totally. And if you type totally ADHD, I think that gets you there as well. There's probably, I don't know how many free videos up at any one point, and those change. There's scores and scores of blogs by me and by many other people. And then there's 17 or 18 full-length programs on everything. And they're, li they're life-changing because you've got, you don't just, you know, you go see an ADHD specialist. You're hearing one doctor. This is like... Some of them have 25 different people in there, uh, experts, coaches, researchers, psychiatrists, psychologists, advocates, authors, all these people, many of whom have it themselves. So you, you're hearing practical solutions, you're hearing strategies, and whatever you do take on, I think the overarching thing is, okay, I'm not alone, and... I kind of wish I didn't have this because it would be great to be able to sit still and focus and listen to my kids without having to. But now that I know, I get a fighting chance. And when I find my milieu, boom, I'm off to the races. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for what you've done.